nice job by the cheerleaders in DeSmet. It's week four of Football Friday already, <laughs> and it's really kind of been feeling yeah. like football weather outside. I'm Mark Ovenden. He is Zach Bork. Tonight's show, as it is every week, brought to you by Poles Place in Canton. We've got plenty of highlights for you tonight. And we start at Howard Wood Field in a pair of top-ranked teams. But this would be a major challenge for the Harrisburg Tigers as they face the explosive offense of the Roosevelt Rough Riders, who scored twice on runs by Torin Debricks and led 13-0. Looked like they might roll to a win. But watch this. One of the plays of the night. Hunter Headley throwing to Elliot Kane, who sticks out that left paw and catches Ooh. it one-handed. And that would lead to this. Headley. Uh, nobody's open, so he's going to run it, just like Devricks takes it in for a score. It's 13-7 to now in favor of Roosevelt. 108 left in the half. I thought they'd go to Anderson. Instead, they go to Sam Lowe, who barrels into the end zone. Harrisburg leads 14-13 to with a minute left in the half. But two plays later, uh, the half isn't over yet, guys. The oh. pass out to Nathan Barnes cuts it back twice. Gone. Just 72 yards for a touchdown. Place. They are a quick strike team. 20 to 14 at halftime. Now, no, not yet, guys. More highlights. As Harrisburg driving in the third quarter, it looks like they're going to take the Ooh. lead. But nice the interception catch. by Carter Lohr in the end zone. And then the next play, same combo. Barnes from Debricks. This time they do a little better. 80 yards for the touchdown. Now you can put that score up. 41 21. Roosevelt survived a tough game from Harrisburg. All right, you want some highlights? I got some highlights here. O'Gorman hoping to bounce back with a huge win last week over Brandon Valley. Today they host Washington, number two ranked in their homecoming. Look at this catch from Logan Utech. One foot in the back of the end zone. That puts his team up 14 to nothing. But just like last week, the Knights bounce back. It's 14-7. Washington trying to field goal, but it's blocked. Nick Billion. It's not worth a billion, but it's going to be worth seven points because Canyon Bauer is going to take it back 66 yards. He had the big week against They've Brandon last week. On. They're lucky Always against that. Washington. Well, it wasn't so lucky in the second half, though. It's 14 all at the break. Third quarter, watch this catch. Johansson on fourth and two going deep. You ticked. Nice. Almost a Dallas Goddard play. i got to rewind this one more time. Slow motion. Slow, slow motion. Slow motion. Slow motion. Led to a Jaden Johansson score. It was 21-14 after three. And then the Warriors just put it away in the fourth quarter. That's Johansson to throw Reisdorfer. And he is long gone. They would add another touchdown as Washington goes on to win 35 to 14. So this week it was the fourth ranked Lynx who are looking to bounce back against Rapid City Stevens. Fans got a great show from the band at half. Football team wasn't too bad either. Alex Wickersham rumbles into the end zone to start the third quarter and the Lynx are rolling. Next time down, Alex Walton are gonna fake the run Roll out and find his favorite target, Spencer Grage. Already had one touchdown, just misses out on a second, but no worries because Waltner would punch it in right after that. As the Lynx go on to get the victory by a final of 49 to 20. Again, there's your Roosevelt score, 41 to 21. Uh, Washington again wins it 35-14 at the MAC. Yankton over Aberdeen, 24 to 20. Mitchell in the fourth, beating Sturgis. Pierre, the game of the night in overtime, wow. beats here in 34-33. Watertown 18 to 14 and Lincoln 27 to seven wins that game on the road. All right, the top team in 11A is Madison. Uh, no argument with that. The hmm. Bulldogs have looked very impressive thus far and they did again tonight, spoiling homecoming for Lennox. That's Josh Giles to Jackson Yankee. It's seven to nothing in the first quarter. Still in the first quarter as the Lennox Oriole fans looking a bit uh, disconsolate. Giles goes to Mason Layton for the touchdown. It is. 13 to nothing now in favor of Madison. And they're just kind of getting warmed up at this point. Uh, these names, they keep coming back. This time it's gonna be Jaden Yonke with a long touchdown run. And it's 20 to nothing. They leave a lot of just people Just like the number on his back. Down in yeah. Madison. Second quarter now, it's gonna be yeah, Riley yeah. Yonke this time with a touchdown run. All those young kids, in Madison, they want to play for the coach with the cowboy hat. And everybody else fears that, that hat. That makes it 27-0. You get the message. Final 53-7, Madison wins. T is ranked fourth in 11A, and the Titans hosted a Dell Rabbits team that looked much better last week against Tri-Valley in the third quarter. Peyton Conrad strips the ball, and he is going oh, places. Nice. Namely, the end zone. It's 19-0 Titans. Their defense is fearsome this year. A little bit later in the third quarter, they hand it off to Tanner Heim. Due to the Quarriers, but Dell Rapids just had an answer for everything. Tough sledding all night long. In the fourth quarter, Hunter Hansen 
Looking for the deep ball to Mason Peter to try and get Del Rapids back into this one, but that's a nice grab, but there wasn't a whole lot of nice grabs on this night because T was too good. Titans go on to get the shutout victory by a final of 19 to nothing. All right, two more unbeaten teams left uh, in, in Volga for this game. Sioux Falls Christian against Sioux Valley. You're not going to believe these highlights. Sioux Falls Christian airing it out tonight. <laughs> uh, that was Sawyer Prince to DJ Feixra. I came back from shooting their game last week, said all they ever do is run, but they win, of course. Well, look at this. That's not just a pass. That's a hook and lateral. Yeah, Parker Nelson, the recipient. Uh, same drive, uh, they're going to throw it again. I, I just can't believe this. Another <laughs> touchdown pass. This is how you stay good. You improve. That's Feikstra again. <laughs> that made it 18 to 7. And yeah, just, just in case you didn't believe those other ones, Tyler Van Horsen catches this. 26-13, Sioux Falls Christian, the victor. Now we head east into Minnesota for what we thought was a pretty big game in Adrian. That's where we sent Paul Heinert, who's back after a two-week hiatus. Yes, Mark, I came back just for this game, and it is great to be back. The talented Dragons hosting powerhouse Miniota. We'll pick it up in the first quarter after an Adrian turnover. It's Alex Poland. He's going deep to his big tight end, Thomas Hennon. It's 14 to nothing, Miniota. And Grandma looks nervous, <laughs> and she should be. Next possession for the Vikings. Poland with the swing pass to Isaac Hennon. He slips a tackle. He's going to go in for six more. 21-0, Miniota. Second quarter now. Poland continues to do his thing, hooking up again with Thomas Hennon. He makes a couple of Dragons miss. Stretches for the score. 28-0, Miniota. Now it's the other Hennon's turn to score. It's Isaac his second touchdown of the half, 35-0 midway through the second quarter. Miniota rolls 61-0 over Adrian. Unbeaten Mount Vernon Plainton hitting the road for Irene where they're hoping it would be a good night and it was a good first drive for the Titans. Hayden Schmidt punching it in from a couple of yards out to give them the early advantage. Irene Wakanda looking for an answer on their next drive. They get it when Tate Gale connects with Trey King on the short route. He sheds the tackle. And see you later. We're all knotted up in the early going, but this was MVP's kind of night. Schmidt going to air it out on the next possession for Devin Rahanek. They actually had a one-point lead, and this is how you extend a one-point lead. That's another touchdown pass as he's just a little wide open. Now Vernon Plankington goes on to get the win 64-14. They're pretty good. Yeah. All right, the best team. Speaking of pretty good, although Lincoln Gibbs did not play wow. tonight for Langford, they still look pretty good. Uh, they're the defending state champs, and they're off to a great start. Chance Olson drops back, finds Mason Larson. That's a 20-yard gain. Then it's going to be Harley Gibbs. That's the younger brother of Lincoln from 13 yards out. Goes in for a touchdown. It's 8 to nothing. Lions. Olson drops back to pass, throws over the middle. Dismets Noah Allen. That's a nice great throw. pick right there. <laughs> Beautiful pick. But in the second quarter, it's going to be Olson. This time with the fake, uh, he heads to the sideline. Great cut back down the sideline, and guess what? He is gone. He's pretty good, too. He's pretty, he's really good. <laughs> Two of the best players in the state on the same team, 40 to 12. Langford wins that game. Over to Alcester Hudson, where the Cubs host the Parker Pheasants. Gotta love those helmets. Just before the break, Landon Lieberman back to pass, dropping up for Zam Centino. Zam with a Z, Z A M, and it's fun to watch, more fun to say, and fun for Pheasants. They're in the end zone. And they have the lead. Third quarter, Logan McConnell finds a gap, reaches the goal line. That cuts Parker's lead to 26-20. On the next Pheasants possession, Lieberman going to scramble. Promise you he's going to scramble. It's now 26-20. You see Lieberman scrambles and heaves it for the end zone where he finds Grant Plucker, who's going to pluck this one. This was a classic game back and forth the whole way. And the final Parker in the final minutes the wins it 40-36. All right, quickly as we head down to Iowa, Sheldon at Boyden Hall Rock Valley. Boyden Hall Rock Valley has another fine team again this year. And there's uh, Jacob Schaefer, who's going to barrel into the end zone, shaking wow. tacklers. Look at him go. All the way for the touchdown. Let's go to the scoreboard and see. They roll 55 to 21. West Lyon 45 to 12 tonight. Scotland and West Central both win, along with Mont Vernon Plankett. And you saw the highlights. Dual beat Tri State. Baltic has a a fine team this year. Canton over Tri-Valley, Chamberlain and Coleman Egan both win. Corsica Stickney and Dakota Valley both win. Madison and Parkston victorious. Sully Boots and Teos Vizina victorious. 
Wolsey Washington undefeated, ranked number one. Dawson Boyd wins tonight. Chester over Howard. Sioux Falls Christian, you saw those highlights with all those touchdown passes. Yeah. T pitches a shutout tonight. Gayville Vollen wins. Hills Beaver Creek and Kimball Whitelake, one of the games of the night, beats Bonham. Platt Geddes and Little Wound both win. It was uh, Gregory and Eureka Bottle victorious. Castlewood, Esteline, and Old Hammer Mona Rutland both win. Winner, it was Valentine's Day for them. Hamlin having a nice <laughs> year. Win no one's going to beat Winner this year. There's that great Parker, Alcester Hudson final. Hey, you think Dallas Goddard's happy? His alma mater wins 54 28. Dallas with that one handed catch last week for South Dakota State. Spearfish and Gordon both win. And that is it for our scoreboard. Zach has more sports right after this.